Okay, uh, hello everybody and welcome to the homework video for the SysOp task for Eric Burling. So, please do remember that you can pause this and re-watch as much or as little as you need. This is not supposed to be something you watch and have memorised. Men of Eric Burling's class were expected to marry well. They were expected to find um, a good wife who either brought money or the skills that were expected of a woman in running a household and charming um, your boss, for example. And that was a large part of what they were expected, but not as much as a woman. Men were also expected to take over their father's businesses, okay, um, especially a character like Eric. You know, he's supposed to follow in the family footsteps. And while that's confining to some extent, he still has more freedom than women. There's no stigma about who Eric dates before he gets married. There's no stigma really about his relationships at all. Nobody cares. Whereas the expectations of women were much more strict. So Eric lives a relative freedom for a middle to moving into the upper class man who can take over his father's business. Just to remind you, he is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Burling at the start. Well, he still is. At the start, he's very juvenile. That's a word from your knowledge organiser. Um, he's incredibly socially inept as well. He's not able to communicate properly with his family. He's quite reckless, incredibly frustrated, especially as the news of Eva slash Daisy's death comes to light. Um, but also in, in just the way he acts around dinner, you know, it's his sister's engagement party and he is a bit drunk and quite nasty at times. He does become incredibly repentant. He does start to show regret and accept responsibility. And he undergoes quite a transformation, as much as Sheila, if, if not more so, arguably. Um, he's quite a sad character. He's very unloved. He doesn't feel he's got the love of his father or his mother. He doesn't fit the mould of what the men were supposed to do. He hasn't done anything expected of a young man. And he's a victim of those values of his parents. They expect certain things from him. He can't do them. And therefore, he feels unloved. He feels like a failure. So this is one of the first of... Um, you've got more quotes in this on your quote sheet, but this is one of the ones you could use. He's not quite at ease, half shy, half assertive. It's a really interesting quote. Now, for a start, we've got repetition here. The repetition of half is interesting. So he doesn't seem to be a whole person. He doesn't seem like a whole human being. He's not quite easy. He's never comfortable. And he is shy, but he is assertive. And we do see some assertiveness, com assertiveness coming out. So this almost moves across the play. But it's really important to be aware that in he at this point is with his family but he can't be comfortable and there's a lot we could consider about that and a lot you can annotate in your scissor please remember this comes from at one so this happens when he's debating having eva fired with his dad he fired her for wanting wages and going on strike wanting an increase in wages and his father said you know they wanted higher wages, we're not having that. And he says, why shouldn't they try for higher wages? We try for the highest possible prices. So interestingly here, he's questioning his father. He's challenging the authority. Supposed to do what his dad says the, in the same way that uh, Gerald does. Gerald does exactly what everybody above him says. Eric doesn't, which is quite fascinating. He's also using an argument within this capitalist concept of prices. We've got this theme of capitalism that runs throughout the whole uh, play, but of course it contrasts with the idea of decent wages, of equal wages, which is actually a socialist concept. So Eric is challenging authority here, but he's doing it with the language of capitalism. And that's very, very early on as well. He may be an idiot at dinner, but he's quite quick to jump to the defence of, at this point, as we, as we know her, Eva Smith, the anonymous woman. Another quote you could talk about. So at this moment, they have discovered that Eva was pregnant and Eric needed money. And his father says, well... 
why didn't you come to me? Why didn't you ask for my help? And he says, because you're not the kind of father a chap could go to when he's in trouble. That's why. Apologies. It's been, printed, it's been cut off there. So for a start, we see again this cold family dynamic. This is not a family that loves each other. Okay, he wasn't comfortable at the start. He's not comfortable at the end. And that's really quite brutal. He, it's, it reflects this idea of him as unloved and a bit alone, actually. Eric is not a happy man. Um, it's also, again, about him challenging things. He's not trying to smooth anything over. He's not trying to make anything better. He is challenging the way he's treated by his father and society in general. So... It's quite a fascinating one because Mr. Burling can't comprehend why he didn't come to him. And this, so this challenges Mr. Burling's own um, sort of self-importance as well and who he thinks he is. And Eric is really gaining strength here. This is a strong moment for Eric. For a family that say nothing, that have this cold family dynamic, Eric is expressing feelings. And that is unusual. Okay, and one more quote you could talk about. Shouting, and I see the girl's dead and we all helped to kill, kill her, and that's what matters. This is interesting in itself. Eric is expressing himself in an incredibly strong way. So we're going to say here, this is a strong expression. This is an incredibly quiet household that the Burlings have been living in. And all of a sudden, there's somebody shouting. So it's a big contrast to the other discussions, which have been tense, but they've been quiet. Maybe some tears. So it's a contrast with earlier. Uh, what's also really interesting, so this is in Act 3. They, they think at this point, the Burlings, that there was a hoax. Or they're about to discover that. And Eric says, it doesn't matter. This girl is dead. And that's what matters. That's where the pain is. That's where the problem is. And he's using extremely blunt language. Again, he's being strong with his language. He's not in any way um, hiding behind the truth. He's saying how he feels. And really interestingly, we all helped. It's a collective term. Got that theme of socialism again. And this idea of responsibility. He's taking responsibility, but he wants other people to as well. And as a member of the younger generation, that's what matters to him. And that's what Priestley believed the younger generation did. They took responsibility and they had the potential to change. So I hope those uh, talks through those quotes have been helpful. Please remember these aren't um, appropriate notes to be copying straight over. They're not suitable. But what you can do is use them to remind you of what the quotes are about. And there's the help for your scissor on Eric Burling. Take care.